hello my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. So as the name of this video suggests I'm going to be firing up a Willesco static steam engine. Now if you watch my channel you know the story I was looking for a, a traction engine, a steam traction engine model uh, and I ended up buying a Mammoth steam traction engine but on that journey while I was looking for what to buy and who the different manufacturers I came across the German manufacturer Willesco and I was looking at some of their beautiful static steam engine models and I'm only human, I succumbed and I ended up not only buying the traction engine from Mammoth, I ended up buying the Willesco static steam engine or a Willesco static steam engine. So without further ado, I'm going to put it on here now, readjust the camera so you can see what I bought and talk you through it. Right, so there you go, the Willesco static steam engine. What I'm going to do is in a minute I'm going to get the GoPro and while I'm talking you can have a look around it, I'll do some shots around it for you. Absolutely beautiful, I'm completely and utterly blown away with it. In fact, I think I slightly like this one more than Aunt Bessie, the other Mammoth one. I call me Mammoth Traction Engine Auntie Bessie. This is Vulcan, I've called it Vulcan. And the reason I've called it Vulcan is because I've named it after the um, English electric factory at Newtonley Willows that built a lot of the early um, steam engines and diesel engines. And we used to go past it as kids and my mate used to say, look out this side, there's the English electric factory, Vulcan Works it was called, Vulcan Foundry. So I've called this Vulcan. Now somebody who follows me on Instagram or I think on YouTube, told me uh, something very interesting and I didn't know. In Roman mythology, Vulcan was the, the metallurgist, the, 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 the god of metallurgy and forging things. So completely apt for the Vulcan foundry to be called Vulcan foundry. But uh, I just thought it was a brilliant name for this thing. Right, so this is the Willesco D20. There's, and I'll tell you the reasons why I bought the D20. First off, I'll tell you a couple of things, because I'm going to give you tips, because a few people have told me that when I showed a glimpse of this uh, on the last video about Aunt Bessie, the, the Mammoth Traction Engine, a few people said they wanted to buy one of these. Number one, if you go to the Willesco uh, website, uh, you've got to create an account before you buy. And unfortunately, when you go to put in your country of origin in the drop down menu, the UK isn't there. UK, England, Great Britain, whatever you want to call it, it isn't there. So I think that might be something to do with Brexit. So I couldn't buy directly from Willesco. However, there are models on eBay and there are models on Amazon. I got this off Amazon because on eBay, as per usual, and I highlighted this in the last video, a lot of the people who are selling these things want top money for them or just below brand new price, but they won't say whether they work or not. You usually get that lame excuse of, it's been in the attic for 10 years and I've never run it, so it's, if you buy it, you're an, you're an enthusiast, I'm sure you'll be able to get it going. And it's like, not good enough if you're asking that kind of money for it, it's not good enough, you need to tell us whether it works or not. Um, so I got it off Amazon. This is the D20. The reason I bought the D20 was a couple of things that I thought were beautiful about it. I, let me just say, they start off around £170 for the lower models, and I think the top model is about six, £700. This falls somewhere in between. This cost me, I think it cost me £297, this one. And I bought this one because it's got the little pressure gauge on there, and it's got a little regulator on there you can turn and you can get the thing going. The other major reason why I bought the D20 was because on some of the other models you'll see this brick effect chimney here and this brick effect base here. On some of the other models this is in jet, jet sort of black and on one model it's in sort of like red, this kind of red, pillar box red. And I thought, coming from the, the north of England where I come from which is basically bricks everywhere, this represents more the colour of bricks than what we're used to, what I'm used to seeing. We don't really get jet black bricks, we don't get pillar box red bricks, so this looked much more natural and much more like something you'd see out and about really. So that's why I bought it, the little um, the steam, steam gauge and the, the, the bricks looked fantastic on it. Right, so, quick brew. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fire it up, the first thing we need to do is put some water in. So, I'll give you a quick look around it and I'll talk through it. Right, so there you go. There is a close-up of Vulcan. Um, 
absolutely beautiful as you can see you've got the flywheel there you've got the pistons there it's even got a little governor on it which is for only for like decor decorative purposes doesn't actually work but you'll see this spinning around when it gets going um, and then look at this look at the boiler there the boiler is absolutely beautiful and they've got the steam the steam gauge there uh, and I just love the way it looks I really do love the way it looks I love the chrome the chrome effect um, on the boiler love the pipe work and we've got a little whistle here when it gets going so there you go so what we need to do eventually is we need to um, where are you we need to get a drive attached to here um, let's have a look show you we need to get something attached to here and we need to drive something from it so that we can uh, I've seen a, a little light and we can we can power a generator and, and have a little light working off it. So when I do that, I'll, I'll show you what, what's going on. So without further ado, I'm going to get the kettle and I'm going to um, get some water in this thing and we'll get it, uh, we'll start to get it steamed up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through the good and the bad. There's been a few little problems I've had with it, nothing major, um, but let's get it going. Okay, right, so I've got my kettle. I'm going to use warm water in the boiler. Uh, I don't don't put boiling water in, but you use warm water in the boiler. Um, so I'm going to undo the the top of the boiler there. I'll just show you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to there you go. Same again, just again. So there you go. Undo the top of the boiler. There. Put my little uh, funnel in, um, and I'm all fingers and thumbs here because I'm trying to film and do it. Now, somebody did say to me, don't use, please use distilled water in your boiler. Um, but this in Manchester, we've got soft water. So there isn't a lot of minerals dissolved in it. We don't have to use, we don't have to descale things. A lot, I think in the south of England and various places, they have to buy these descaling tablets because kettles and washing machines get furred up, get deposits of, um, you know, lime scale. Um, we tend not to have that in Manchester. Uh, it's, we're in a soft water area. Anyway, that said, so I'm going to put some warm water in the boiler. Where are we? So the boiler, from what I understand, takes 250 mils. Um, fair old bit it'll take. And you need to get plenty of water in your boiler. Don't ever let your boiler run uh, dry. So I'm going to, at the end here, we can see just how much it's actually fogging up, steaming up because it's warm water. But at the end here, we can see how much water we've got in the boiler. So I'm going to just look at that a minute while I fill it up and try and look at the front of the go. So it'll take a fair bit of water in this. Ah, you can just see the level now, can't you? You can see the level going up. Right, so we need a decent amount of water in. Just change the angle there for you. There you go. Right, where are we up to with the boiler? So we're just about uh, half full there. I'm going to put a bit more in. Right, so that's my boiler. Plenty of water in. You need to put your boiler top on. Now, um, the firebox, I'm going to tell you about a few problems I've had with the firebox. Uh, I'm going to um, just record this on the GoPro. You'll see that the firebox is quite narrow. And the tablets I bought for Auntie Bessie, the uh, traction engine, were like that. Round ones like that, right? And they don't work because they won't go in there. Let's have a look. They won't go in there. And they've got to sit snug inside there. Otherwise, they won't go in the firebox. Otherwise, they won't go in the firebox there, like I see. So, well, let's go send you a few. They sent me literally four tablets to, uh, to burn. And obviously, I've had this running already and I've played with it. And the four tablets are well gone. What I'm going to do is the downstairs, I'm going to get the, the tablets that I bought and that I recommend you buy. The other problem I've had is that that the firebox there that has been very tight and you've not been able to slide it in and out and what I've done is I've had to 
get a knife in there and just open out that channel in there. Let me get my phone and light it for you. Um, you know what I'm like. I like to light things for you. You see the channel in there? Where's the light? There's a channel in there. I don't know if you can see it. That was very tight. Um, and so I've had to just open it out so that the firebox goes in. But I do think this firebox, this fire, this burner is the word I'm looking for, isn't it? It's a bit of a pain because you can't put them in. Now you're going to say, well, slice it in half. And you're right, I could slice it in half, and I have done. But they all crumble up and break up, right? And you feel like you're wasting it because you, you end up with bits and crumbs all over. And yeah, you could put them in the, the crumbs in the boiler, but it's not the same. You don't want to be doing that because you're losing half your tablet. So those are the ones I bought. And they're from, uh, I think I got them from eBay. Right, I'll open them up for you. I'm trying to do everything one-handed. Right, there you go. So as the round ones are just showing you, these are square ones like that. And what you have to do with them is you have to break it in half. So I'm just going to break that in half now in front of the camera. If I break that in half, oh, they stink. Uh, that's better, you see, and that's much more burnable. And we'll get, we'll put three in, three halves in. I'll break another one in half. Yeah. There you go, put one away. And then we'll put them now in our burner. Just, we'll put that there so you can see what we're doing. Put them in our burner. There you go. And what we'll do next is we'll light them with one hand free, <laughs> with one hand. Is it in? This is the bit that appeals to the kid in you, playing with fire. Uh, that middle one's not in, let's get that middle one going. I think that'll get going in a minute in the heat. Right, we'll put that now in the boiler. Put it in the boiler. The middle one's still not burning, you know. I need to get our middle one going before we do anything. Come on, burn your bugger. Right, middle one's on fire now. Yep. Are you happy with that? Are you having that? Yep. In we go. Fire's in. Even though that's only... Um, I'll just turn the GoPro off a sec. Even that's only little tablets of like, I think it's solid methylated spirits or something, burning. Don't underestimate the heat and how, how hot this gets. It gets really hot. In fact, yeah, in a minute I won't be able to touch it. A good indicator of how much steam we've got is the whistle. And we'll keep our eye on the end there. We'll keep our eye on the, uh, on the boiler, whether it's going or not. Right, so you'll see that the, um, the pressure gauge is going up. What we like on the... Uh... Now, it did whistle a bit, but we need a bit more... We've lost pressure there, so we need a bit more... We should be able to whistle without losing loads of pressure, so it needs a bit more time to, uh, to just um, fire up. Oh, and one thing I forgot is that thing there. It seems to... It loses a little bit of... Um, because it fires steam up the chimney. Ouch. Um, you have to put that in there because there's a drip, there's a drip out. There you are, like being on a drone. Flying a drone over the chimney. We've done that a few times and there's the brew. Right, turn the regulator. Oh, and there we go. Vulcan's away. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So we've got a decent pressure. And obviously with the regulator there, I can just slow it down. Speed it up rather. Or I can slow it down. To get it just to tick over slowly like that. And when you get it very, very slow, um, I'm going the wrong way. 
the governor starts to just intermittently flop down. There you go. And if you look at the top there, you see the steam coming out the, the chimney. How beautiful is that? It's fantastic, isn't it? Listen to that. How fantastic is that? I just love that chimney. Ouch, I can't put my hand over it. But the, the steam that comes out the chimney, I just, I just love it. I think it's a thing of beauty, to be honest with you. I really do. Um, I just listen to it purring over. Let me put my mic down near it. So yes, we need a little drive off here and we need to be able to drive something and get it powering something, a light or something like that. There's all sorts of accessories you can buy for it to uh, drive. It'll drive like a little tool station and all sorts. But I just think it's a thing of beauty. <laughs> Love the uh, pressure gauge, ready? <laughs> Fantastic. So, boys toys, but yeah, brilliant. So we'll get James on this, up the ladders and polishing it and we'll get him making a brew. I'm sure there's a tap somewhere where we can tap off some hot water and have a brew. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring the bigger camera forward so you can watch it for a moment just ticking over. Look at that steam going up there. It's amazing. I've got a black background to it. Can you see it? I love it. Love it. Right. And I love the um, pressure gauge. It really lets you see what's going on in the boiler. It's brilliant. You can really see whether you need to add more coal in it, put more coal in the boiler, or regulate your steam. And you can, uh, you know, really feel that you're in the workshop with the machine, with the, uh, the steam engine. Oh, me. T signs fell down. Drive that gear. <laughs> right, there you go. Anyway, so there you go. That's Vulcan. A Willesco D20 static steam engine. I'm in love. Absolutely in love with it. Right, what I'm going to do now is just for noise purposes, I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to pull the burner out there. Oh, we'll have a fire. I'm going to put that there in a moment. Yes, this is an ironing board, by the way. Right, so there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you decide to buy one, wonderful. There's another one. There's a, a, a vertical one you can on the website. And I think there's one, I think it's on eBay. And it's a D455 and it's a vertical one. I'm in love with that one as well. That's brilliant. But for further reading, this is very much a model, a toy. If you want to look at the big boys' toys or... It's still a, a model toy, but it's much, it's almost a scaled down real one. There's a, a company called Stuart Steam Engines or Stuart Steam Models. If you look at their website, their machines are literally, you know, literally proper heavy machine pieces. You could literally scale it up and it would be industrial. The governors on them actually work and everything. It's, they're just absolutely beautiful. But I was looking at the, uh, the mill steam plant and it's like £2,200, so it's a little bit, little, bit out of my, um, little bit out of my reach at the moment, That, but I would love that one, that's amazing. So yes, check out Let's Go. I'll give you all the tips and everything. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, I certainly did, I thought it was amazing. We're going back on, we're going back on. Still got loads of fuel left yet. Yeah, we'll just get that boiler boiling again. Anyway, I'm going on now because I'm so excited about this thing. I hope you enjoyed the video. I think I've covered everything. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care. And I shall see you in the next video, which is coming soon. Um, I've got plenty of videos, to be honest with you. I've just been out busy filming and not had a chance to uh, edit. 
So as soon as I get a chance to edit some videos, I'll get them out for you. Working full time, eh? What a bummer. Never mind. Let's, uh, one last time, one last time. Where are we with the boiler? Ooh, needs to go. Needs to go. Come on. Ooh. Oh, the pressure gauge is well up. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs>